and I'm the chair of the Coastal Christian High School Board of Governors. And on behalf of the board, I want to welcome you to the class of 2023 Coastal Christian High School graduation. Now let's have a little fun. If you're able, please stand as I call your relationship with a Coastal Christian High School graduate. And remain standing, and remain standing. Coastal Christian High School faculty and staff, please stand here in the back. Coastal Christian High School students, they're already standing. Coastal Christian High School coaches, please stand. Parents, please stand. Let's go. Grandparents, please stand. Family members and friends of a Coastal Christian High School graduate, please stand. But there is one final group. If you just like to roam around town and go to high school graduation ceremonies, <laughs> please, some of the people in the balcony don't think this is fun, but uh, please stand. Anyhow, you have worked really hard to get your graduate graduated this night, so let's give each other a huge round of applause. also have one final question. Raise your hand if you're sending one of these graduates to UNCW. Raise your hand high. Be proud of that. Well, I'm also the dean of the Cameron School of Business at UNCW. So I want you to remember to get them into business school. That's hugely important. Think business, okay? The Coastal Christian High School Board also wants me to tell you how thankful we are for each one of our families and graduates. Thank you for choosing a Christian education and thank you for entrusting your graduates to Coastal Christian High School. To start us off this evening, I want to remind you of the Coastal Christian High School colors and they're all gonna be in display this evening. And I wanna talk about their meaning for just a second to set the tone for this graduation celebration. The Coastal Christian High School colors start with black. Not to wallow in it, but black is a reminder of the former dominance of sin in our lives. The Bible says, and such were some of you. Point your finger at me, too. Red is the Coastal Christian High School color. It's a reminder of the precious blood of Christ shed for the forgiveness of sins for all who believe. Scripture says the blood of Christ cleanses from all sin. Then there's white, which is a twofold reminder, first, of the imputed or declarative purity now enjoyed by those who have embraced Christ's redemptive sacrifice. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And based on that righteousness, we can have fellowship with God. Second, white is also a reminder that our lives should reflect the fellowship that we enjoy with our Heavenly Father. Remember, put on the new self, created after the likeness of God and true righteousness and holiness. And finally, the last school color is silver, which is a reminder of the Bible's command to seek God's wisdom like precious silver. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined in a furnace, on the ground, purified seven times. So with this colorful assortment clearly displayed this evening, please remember that the Bible is really, really fond of events and stories that memorialize God's goodness. We have the Passover, memorials for battles won, the story of the father killing the fatted calf over the return of the prodigal, and the image of the final marriage supper of the Lamb in the book of Revelation. These memorial events and stories are all meant to celebrate God's goodness and salvation. So tonight, we memorialize God's goodness in the training and nurturing of our students at Coastal Christian High School. Sometimes big events come and we don't seem to grasp their significance at the time. 
So my prayer for you is that you would remember and truly enjoy this grand celebration of God's love to these graduates reflected in the black and the red and the white and the silver. So I really want you to have a great evening. They've worked really hard and they deserve this special evening remembering God's love for them. And now with that being said, please stand for our 2023 procession.
Good evening and welcome again to the 2023 graduation ceremony of Coastal Christian High School. I'm Brenda McCombie and I have the honor of being the head of school for, this, uh, for Coastal Christian. First I always like to thank Port City Church for having us here. They do a great job hosting. Uh, they're just so gracious to have us. They do the video for us and so round of applause for Port City Church. The 
the senior class, the faculty and staff of Coastal would also like to thank the parents and the grandparents and the friends, the relatives who are all here and supported these students along the way. They don't do the, this alone, so it takes a lot of family support and we thank you as well. As this year began, back early in the fall, these seniors went on a retreat to the mountains of North Carolina and they set a word as a theme for their senior year. They chose the word pursue. And boy, did this group pursue various goals with all their hearts. This class aimed high in their academic achievements, and these seniors have received 235 acceptance letters from 67 colleges and universities. They've earned the highest amount of scholarship dollars ever in the history of Coastal Christian High School at $4.8 million. That's a million dollars more than any other class. <laughs> So that's a tremendous accomplishment for 76 students. This group also pursued physical challenges aiming high to set new records and fight for championships in athletics. Uh, four of these students have signed to play athletics at the college level when they leave Coastal. This year the varsity cheer team became the national grand champions and four of our seniors uh, helped that achieve that goal for them. And if you hadn't heard, the varsity boys track and field team and the varsity girls track and field team both won state championships last weekend. <laughs> so that was, that was a first for both of our teams to achieve that goal. And 21 of these seniors were on those teams that won those championships. That's a huge number for this class. Uh, so. Uh, these seniors next year, we're going to truly miss you in athletics. You participated in um, so many sports teams on the fields, on the courts, in the swimming pool with our first ever swim team, and we're going to truly miss you. As seniors, our artists and musicians also pursued excellence with their God-given talents. At the ACSI Art Festival, it was one of our seniors who walked away with the best in show ribbon. And I hope you're able to see the outstanding performance of the Wizard of Oz. A couple of our seniors stole our hearts as the Tin Man and the Scarecrow. Our choirs traveled for performances and competitions multiple times this year and brought home superior ratings from all the festivals they attended. So at this evening's, as it progresses, you're gonna witness for yourself the talents of these senior vocalists and musicians. You just heard some of them already earlier this morning, this evening. And I can't begin to express just how talented uh, they are in words, you'll just have to, to watch them tonight. So seniors, you took that word to heart, you pursued, you aimed high, and you achieved your goals. But my challenge to you as you leave Coastal tonight as graduates is to continue with the most important pursuit of your life, and that's to seek God's plan for you, seek a relationship with him that'll satisfy like no other, and aim to hear his voice and draw close to him. That will be the most important and most satisfying pursuit of your whole life. At Coastal, our mascot's the Centurion, and this mascot was chosen because the soldier represents strength and honor in biblical history. The Roman soldier who rose to the rank of Centurion did so because of his courage, his strong faith, and his loyalty. Centurions exhibited good conduct, open convictions, and a devout fear of God. This year we had three Centurions, and I'd like for them to come to the stage now, so please welcome our three centurions, Ms. Julia Butler, Ms. Sarah Edwards, and Mr. Cade Gaskell. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McCombie. While we focused on the word pursue in our senior year, I think we could all agree that we should continue to do so as we step into this new chapter of our lives. Our senior scripture comes from the Old Testament in 1 Chronicles 16, 10 through 11. Glory in his name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength, seek his presence continually. May we continue to hold on to those verses and seek God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Please join me in prayer. 
Dear Lord, I thank you for the arrival of this beautiful and celebratory day. I humbly ask for grace and mercy over each person walking across this stage tonight. May we all be filled with the peace that surpasses all understanding as we each enter into a new part of our journey. Lord, I ask that we may all happily steward well the gifts you have given us as a preparing of ourselves for service to you and to others, our identities drawn from you and not from our grades or accolades. Use whatever studies or next steps we take to further shape our vision of what our place and call in this world might be. Begin to show us where our own deep gladness and the world's deep need might meet. Let us be mindful not only of our studies, but also mindful of the needs of our peers and even of our professors and mentors along the way. I sincerely thank you for the blessing that is coastal, and I pray that same blessing over each future class. As we prepare to go different ways, be as present in our parting as you were in our gathering. Be present in our journeys, be present in our days to come, be present in our works, in our words, and in our hearts. Be present in our own community. Be ever at work among and through us. May all we do be for your glory. And in your heavenly name I pray, amen. All right, please welcome our student council president, Carter Grace, to join our vice president, Cade Gaskell, for the presentation of the senior gift. Good evening, everyone. Each year, Coastal's graduating class has the pleasure of leaving behind a gift to the school. It's just a simple present to say goodbye and thank you to Coastal for being our home. The class of 2022 gave us our beloved school mascot costume, Roman, who was worn by our very own Cade Gaskell. Yeah. On behalf of the class of 2023, our gift will be a visual welcome to all who enter campus as new banners will be hung on the light poles in our parking lot. Thank you, Carter, and the class of 2023. Now we would like to invite our senior musicians to share our song, Happily Ever After. to begin let the wonder take hold feel it draw you in watch the moment unfold spark a dream only we're meant to follow set in
It is tradition here at Coastal's graduation for the senior class to choose one of our staff members to share a parting blessing. This year, they've, they've truly chosen one of our finest. He's an alum himself, former Centurion Award winner, and a, a truly great teacher and dear friend. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Sam Holdsworth. Thank you, Josh. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Coastal Christian High School 2023 graduation ceremony. I'd first like to thank you, seniors, the graduating class, uh, for the honor, or if I'm really being honest, the cruel and unusual punishment of choosing me to speak at your graduation. I would also like to welcome you, the families and the friends, to tonight's ceremony. To everyone here, but particularly those of you who are about to graduate and your parents, I want to encourage you to slow down. This night will rush by quickly, and in just a few minutes, you will have walked across the stage and gone from being high school seniors to graduates. And many of the people sitting next to you have attended school alongside you these past several years. Very soon, you may not see them as much as you are used to. So though you might be anxious for tonight to be over, to have finished high school, enjoy these final few minutes together and take it all in. As I think back over the past few years, there are many funny memories of you all that come to mind. And one of these that I know many of you are very familiar with was Cade Skills in Trash Ball, wherever you went, Cade. Ah, yeah. uh, there you are. So we all know the feeling of overthinking a very simple task and turning it into something much more difficult than it needs to be. Uh, and Cade, you definitely experienced this the past couple of years. <laughs> For those of you who weren't in my classroom, Trash Ball is a review game that we would play where I would divide the room into two teams and each team would send a representative up to the front where they'd compete to be the first to answer a question correctly. And whoever got that question correct got to throw a ball of paper into a trash can from many places in the room for a variety of points. It was really thrilling. Um, but from early on, okay, this proved quite the troublesome task for you. <laughs> and I'm not exaggerating when I say it resulted in many fetal positions being curled up on the class floor while Cade wailed in agony after a missed shot often from only a couple feet away. Uh, <laughs> I can remember many days after school uh, where class ended, I would run to the bathroom, I'd come back to my room, and I'd find one student left, and it was Cade getting those practice shots in. He wasn't going to leave the gym until he made at least 20. Uh, and uh, Cade, I'm really going to miss you, those practice sessions as well. Uh, there are many others of you I wish I could share uh, just equal stories about from Carter, from his constant interruptions in class, just to say something that he knew would embarrass me. While I tried my hardest and almost always failed not to turn red every single time, uh, to the many of you who love to incessantly find out anything about me through the internet, <laughs> such as Jack Burton, who was the first to creepily find my address, like day two of class, Zillow pictures and all. Um, <laughs> To the rest of you, Josh Cal, who would find pictures of my family members and put them in your slides during class presentations. <laughs> so you'd go from hearing about Galatians to a picture of my dad at work. It was great. <laughs> you all really were such a fun group of students to teach. Um, but as I thought about what I wanted to say to you all tonight, there were many things that kept coming to mind, but one thing really kept coming back, and that was the advice that my youth leader gave me at my high school graduation party. Don't live for yourself in college. Now, at first glance, that might seem counterintuitive. Isn't college all about discovering what you're gonna do with your life, you might ask? And I would concede that yes, clearly there will be lots of introspection and self-reflection going on these next few years, regardless of what you might choose to do. But my hope for you all is something so much more than that. You see, graduating high school is a big deal. 
You've been on this single predetermined track since before you can probably remember. And now for the first time in your life, your next move is more or less up to you. And the literal pomp and circumstance of tonight's ceremony might make you feel as if you finally arrived on the shores of all that you've been waiting for and hoped for, and your life is now yours to live and make the most of. But at the risk of sounding like a killjoy, as big of an accomplishment as graduating is, and it really is something you should be proud of, your life will continue on. And in just a few days, even the thrill of having graduated will begin to diminish. And if this freedom is where you've been putting your hope these past few months or years, you will begin to feel this old familiar feeling of needing to find something else to bring you satisfaction. I know, quite the Debbie Downer. Uh, but this isn't just a mistake that high school seniors make. Many of us can relate. From the seven-year-old anxiously awaiting the Christmas present that if they get, they'll never have to ask for anything ever again, to the 37-year-old awaiting that big promotion or even the 67-year-old who just can't wait to begin retirement, have grandkids, we all make this same mistake of living our lives for just the next stage, thinking that once we get to that next thing, it will finally be the thing that brings us happiness. For those of you who paid attention to my Bible survey class, you might realize this very same cycle that all of humanity, past, present, and future, find themselves in was one of the main subjects of the preacher in Ecclesiastes. So we would be wise in following in his wisdom and understanding that for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. And skipping ahead a little bit, he writes, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. The speaker goes on. Tonight is most certainly a time to rejoice, a time to laugh and a time to dance. But what happens when the good feelings of tonight give way to the more mundane, where life after graduation becomes the norm and not something new and exciting. How could you then avoid that trap of living for yourself when the things that you've been putting your hope in start to become less fulfilling? To answer this question, I want to close with the Apostle Paul's encouragement to the church in Philippi, who were experiencing divisions as a result of their own selfish living. In Philippians chapter two, Paul writes, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interest of others. And here's the key to how doing that really difficult thing is even possible. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Guys, we have received the most radical expression of love imaginable. The fact that the God of this universe loves us enough that he was willing to stoop down and give himself up for us, not just as a servant, but by willingly enduring the humiliation and the anguish of the cross in our place should radically transform our lives. This should be where we find our deepest hope, not the things of this world that are here today and just fade out tomorrow. So as many of you move away to college and the excitement of this transition begins to fade, where life may begin to feel stressful or overwhelming and you feel that inward sinful temptation to become consumed with just living for your own comfort, I implore you to run to Christ, who laid his life down for you. He is the only one that can fill that God-sized hole in your life and provide lasting joy. And as you grow in your relationship with him, allow God to use you as his instruments to reach those around you. Just very practically speaking, plug yourself into a church that will faithfully preach God's word. Commit to being in purposeful relationships with other believers and seek out opportunities to serve those around you. I have truly loved being your teacher and all the fun memories we've experienced together. I'm so excited to see how God will use you all in this next stage of life. 
Congratulations, class of 2023. Thank you, Mr. Holdsworth. What a tough act to follow. My name is Kevin Collada, and I have the great privilege of serving as the principal at Coastal Christian High School. Uh, and this evening, I have the distinct honor of introducing our salutatorian and valedictorian for the class of 2023. And if Mr. Holdsworth's speech was any indication, then it's never too late for one more lesson. And I'm excited to hear what these two individuals have to share with us this evening. Beginning with our salutatorian, <clears throat> achieving uh, academic excellence of this kind particularly in a small school setting like ours, is no easy task. The incessant competition and comparison that goes on between the students can create a real sense of pressure that often robs students of the joy of the learning experience before them. By contrast, our salutatorian this year has earned this distinction with the kind of intellectual curiosity that is truly the envy of his peers. He embodies the essence of a lifelong learner, as evidenced by his tireless devotion to know more about whatever it is that he's studying at the moment. Over the course of his high school career, he studied quite a bit. In fact, he earned nearly 40 credits over the last four years, including several in his anticipated major, which is mechanical engineering. During his senior year, he served as the president of the National Honor Society, and over the last four years, he was elected to represent his peers on the CCHS Honor Council beginning his freshman year. Personally, I had the chance to teach him an AP European history during his sophomore year, and I can attest to not only his academic prowess, but to the man behind those grades as well. In the fall, he plans to attend Liberty University to study mechanical engineering, and I have no doubt that we'll all be better off for it. So at this time, I'd like you to join me in welcoming to the stage the salutatorian of the class of 2023 with a GPA of 4.63, Mr. Joshua David Cowell. All right, I wanted to take a quick moment to uh, take a be real. If any of you don't know what it is, uh, uh, it takes a picture on both sides, so be ready for the second picture. Throw up some peace signs, whatever you want to. Oh, never mind. Apparently, I took it late yesterday, so I can't post it. Never mind. That's a disappointment. Anyways, um, I wanted to start off today by thanking the board, uh, Coastal Administration, um, and all everybody that allowed me to speak today. Um, I also wanted to give a special thanks to my mentors, teachers, coaches, family, and most of all, God. Without these people, I would not be standing here today. First off, graduates, I would like to say well done on committing to our word for the year, pursue, or as some of us have jokingly changed it to, dominate. <laughs> I've seen so much growth in each one of you in your pursuit of God, friendships, and opportunities. Last year, we pursued Operation Thunderstrike, and this year, we pursued a lot for our senior prank. We even went as far as to pursue some free items on Facebook Marketplace to fill the school parking lot. We got three refrigerators, a couch, a piano, a lawnmower to put on top of the roof, washers and dryers, a thick mattress, a rug, the cone that Aaron Grassy somehow got on top of the flagpole. And we even got an 18 foot boat, not just like a flat bottom boat that's like really small. It was a full on boat that we put in the school parking lot. In my opinion, the living room that we constructed in front of the school should have stayed up, but apparently a living room constructed by high schoolers at midnight didn't look professional enough. <laughs> but I'm sure when Ms. McCombie saw the prank, she was thrilled that we continued to pursue even in our senior prank. As I've been thinking about our word for the year, I've had to ask myself what I'm actually pursuing most. At times, it's been pole vaulting. Other times, it's been friendships. Or it's been creating Coke and Mentos rockets and pranking Mr. Holdsworth on the senior trip. Did you like the beans that we put in your bed? Anyways, I've come to the, conclu <laughs> I've come to the conclusion that there is one thing that should, be on our, that should be our main pursuit, and that is Jesus. 
but I think it's safe to say that a lot of times we think of Jesus as an add-on rather than a main pursuit. But why? Why is he often an afterthought, if even that? I think that for a lot of us, it's simple. We feel like God is disappointed in us, and why would we pursue someone that is disappointed in us? There have been many times where I've resisted going to God because I feel like I've messed up too much. But if we feel this way, we misunderstand who God is. Tonight, I want to talk about the heart of God, because ultimately, everything flows from the heart. So if we know God's heart, we know him. In Matthew 11:28 28 through 29, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who, ye who, who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And listen to what Jesus says here. He says, For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Many of us misunderstand that aspect of God. We think that he's waiting for us to mess up so that he can punish us. We think that he is harsh and angry at us. But that is not what God's heart is. By saying that he is gentle and humble, he is saying that he is gentle to those who come to him, and he makes himself accessible to us. He says that he will never turn away anyone who comes to him. When we come to him, in all of our mess and brokenness, he does not angrily turn us away, but he gently and joyfully welcomes us into his arms. A book called Gentle and Lowly that my sister Emma Cowell and Ashton Cowell have both read and have showed me helps us understand God's heart through the following story. Let's say there's a doctor in a remote village who found a cure for a disease that they've been battling for a long, long time. No one in the village trusts the cure for years till a few people finally try it and trust the doctor. Once these people are cured, the whole village seeks out the doctor's cure. The doctor, who just wanted to help the people, is overjoyed that people are finally accepting his cure. In real life, this disease represents sin, and the doctor represents God, offering us a way to be saved from this disease by admitting to our sin and trusting that Jesus' death and resurrection is enough to save us from this disease of sin. Just like how the doctor was overjoyed when the people accepted his cure, God is overjoyed when we come to him. He is not going to deny us the cure just because we turned away from the cure when it was presented to us before. The doctor didn't give the cure with resentment or harshness. He had excitement that he was able to give this cure. That is how it is with God. He joyfully accepts us no matter how much sin is in our life, no matter what we've done. He only feels joy that we are coming to him. But some of us might try to come up with reasons for why this might be true for someone else, but not us. We say to him, I have much sin. And God says, I know, but I still love and want you. I have committed the really, really, really bad sins. But God says, I know, but I still love and want you. I keep sinning even though I know it's wrong. But God says, I know, but I still love and want you. I have turned away from you for so long and have sinned so much. But God says, I know, but I still love and want you. It is never too late to turn away from sin and back to him. Do not confuse what I'm saying, though. Just because God loves you no matter what does not give us the freedom to disobey him without remorse. No, it is just the opposite. After being cured, why would we go back to the disease? Sin is truly harmful to us. In offering forgiveness, God is calling us to choose better and to choose him. Graduates, as we go off to the next steps in life, we will face many trials. We might not always fare well against the temptations and sins of this world, but always keep in mind, no matter what you have done, God still loves you and wants a relationship with you. All you have to do is put your faith and trust in him. Remember that Jesus says that he is gentle and lowly in heart. He says that he will never turn away anyone that comes to him. As everyone in this room continues through life, we must remember that God always wants us, so never stop seeking him, even when you're struggling. He's a good and gentle God and loves each and every one of you. Congratulations, graduates. I think we can all agree that we dominated this year, and I'm so excited to see where each one of us ends up in the future. All glory to God. Thank you very much. Thank you, Josh. While well, our valedictorian this year is leaving an equally impressive legacy at Coastal Christian High School, like his salutatorian counterpart, this young man enrolled at Coastal Christian as the younger sibling of two very accomplished older siblings. However, it wasn't long before he began to distinguish himself from his older brother and sister by achieving his own academic excellence and introducing us to his trademark humor and charm along the way. 
In addition to beginning his high school career in Ms. Barrow's storied Honors Algebra II class, where he made an A, this student went on to take several AP classes over the course of his time at Coastal Christian High School, as well as a dual enrollment course with Taylor University here during his senior year. He too was part of my infamous 2020-2021 AP Euro class, where he set new challenges for himself and achieved them in a way that only a student of his caliber could. Along the way, he also discovered a deep passion for vocational ministry, as evidenced by his senior internship, as well as decision to attend Liberty University next year, where he plans to major in accounting. It is my great honor to welcome to the stage the valedictorian of the class of 2023 with a GPA of 4.67, Mr. Jacob Hatcher Russell. Good evening. First and foremost, I would like to thank the families, friends, faculty, and staff who are here to support us tonight as we reach the final destination in our 13-year-long journey. Soon we are going to symbolically move the tassels on our caps from right to left, and this will mark the end of our tenure at Coastal Christian High School. It is not without the help and guidance of so many of you sitting in this room that we are sitting in this position today. Mom, you have loved me in a truly Christ-like way for 18 years now. You have given my life structure, and you've instilled into me the strongest work ethic. Dad, you have shown me what it means to inspire true joy into a room and to make those around me laugh until they cry. You have shown me what it means to put the desires and the needs of those I love most behind you. And uh, to my siblings, my brothers and my sister, Jackson, Kate, and Finn, I look at you now and I still find myself in awe of the people that you have grown up to be. I find myself in awe of the accomplishments that you have made, and I find myself looking up to you. There are, no three more, there are no three people that I look up to more than the three of you in those seats right there. I would not be me today if it was not for you guys. Faculty and staff, you have poured your heart and your soul into us these past four years. Overcoming a variety of challenges, you have worked to instill into us not just an education, but you also instilled into us a faith, a foundation on a very, very real God. C.S. Lewis once said, education without values, as useful as it is, seems rather to make a man a more clever devil. Each of us, in just a few moments, having moved our tassels, will leave this, this building, and my hope is that we will not be clever devils in this world, but we will have rest and guidance that can only come from one place and one person, and that is the Good Shepherd and Lord, Jesus Christ. This is true for myself and for each of my classmates sitting in these seats before me. We are each surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who love us and are here in support of us. And I would like to personally thank each one of you for sitting here tonight and being here in support of us. For the graduates, this is a time for reflection and a time for looking forward to what will come. Rejoicing in the, lurk, in the work that the Lord has done in us these last several years, I think about the many coastal graduations that I have sat through personally. Whether or not I wanted to be there will remain a secret. But alas, this really just further proves my point that my mom has instilled into me a very structured life, and I love her for it. <sighs> At each of these graduations, I watched my siblings and my friends walk across the stage to receive their own diplomas. They shake Mr. Claudia's hand, get their own photos, and walk back to their own seat. And each and every time I found myself dreaming of walking in their shoes, receiving my own diploma, hearing Mr. Colada say my name, shaking his hand, bear hugging him, walking back to my seat and sitting down, having just graduated Coastal Christian. If you don't know by now, from what Mr. Holdsworth said, we as individuals, it is in our nature, are difficult to satisfy. We look forward to the highest of mountaintops, what we will achieve. We, we hope and dream for amazing things. We find ourselves looking for a career, a college, a grade, a relationship, whatever it may be. And when we receive those things, when we achieve those goals, we find ourselves already looking to the next. It is oh so easy for us to imagine ourselves in the highest of highs, but we often neglect the challenges that will soon come our way. As we enter this new season, we must be prepared. We must be equipped and we must, be under, we must understand what and who it is that we follow. You see, more than any other animal in the Bible, we are compared to sheep. It's interesting because sheep are the most defenseless animal in the animal kingdom. Their response to fear is to freeze. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. 
He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake, and he restores my soul. For even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. Class of 2023, we celebrate tonight. We rejoice in the blessings that we have received up until this point, but to we do not know what tomorrow will hold. But what we do know is that in this psalm, there is a promise. A promise that the God that we serve, the God that we believe in, will put himself in between us and the enemies who await us in the darkest of valleys. A God that is willing to lead us in paths of righteousness, who is willing to restore our soul, and who is willing to provide us rest when we need it most. We serve a God that will shear the wool from our eyes that blinds our sight. You see, sheep, when they are not tended to, will grow mass amounts of wool that will begin to cover them and blind them from the things in front of them. In the midst of this blindness, they will search for fulfillment in anywhere they can find it. And they will find themselves running into a wall over and over and over again until they die. However, with the right care, this wool will be sheared. Through the process may be painful. We serve and believe in a God who puts us through this process knowing the men and the women we will grow to be no longer blinded by the wool that is in our sight. I implore you, invest in this truth now more than ever and internalize this reality for the coming years. This is my charge to you. Understand that we are sheep who are in need of a good shepherd. Embrace what is seemingly painful and trust and abide in the Lord's plans for you. He will guide you through all stages of life. He will rejoice with you on the mountaintops, and he will be there with you in the dark, dark valleys, putting himself between the enemies that await you there. Tonight, I look upon so many familiar faces united together as a class of Coastal Christian one last time. I've grown so incredibly used to seeing each of you walk the halls, sharing classes with you, and partaking in games, events, and trips alongside you. We will depart from this room having obtained a new sense of freedom we have yet to experience. And leaving this room, we decide who we follow. My hope is that each one of us will remain in the loving care of a good shepherd. And it would be my blessing and honor to just close this in prayer. So I'm going to go to the Lord. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be here tonight as a class for one last time. We thank you for the people who have come here to celebrate alongside us, Father. It is my prayer that as we leave this building, as we leave the four walls of Coastal Christian High School, we will leave and we will set out and be disciples of all nations. We will leave and be willing to share the good news, inviting people into the kingdom of Christ. Father, it is my prayer that we would rejoice in the blessings that we have received up until this point. We would rejoice alongside our family members who are here to celebrate us tonight as we make or as we reach a milestone, Father. It is my prayer that we understand, Father, who you are, that we understand that you are a good shepherd, Father, and that the, that the prey that await us in the dark valleys, their knees tremble at the mention of your name. Father, tonight as we go about this night, as we go about tomorrow night and the next night and the night after that, Father, we still serve you. Father, you provide us rest in a way that nothing else can. You provide us fulfillment in a way that nothing else can. And you love us in a way that no one else can. Father, I thank you for the blessings that each of these students sitting before me have been in my life up until this point. And I thank you for the many, many, many amazing things they will do as they leave this building, Father. It is in your son's name that I pray, amen. Thank you.
it's that time. With all due respect to everything else that's happened this evening, this is what we came here for. If this is your first graduation, there are a few house rules. Students, when I call your name, that's your cue to walk across the stage and officially draw an end to your high school career. Family and loved ones, when I call your student's name, that's your cue to celebrate them individually, enthusiastically, and as obnoxiously as possible. So let's begin. <laughs> Emily Sinclair Biagini. <laughs> Zoe Elizabeth Boss. Eli Cohen Bright. <laughs> Tyler Harrison Brooks. Brianna Marie Brown. <laughs> Chloe Grace Buffalino. Angela Joy Burnett. Jack Michael Burton. Julia Rose Butler. <laughs> Gerald Cole Bird. Christian Frederick Karn. <laughs> Robert Zane Choate. Benjamin Davis Coggins. <laughs> Elijah Joshua Connor. Logan Benson Connor. <laughs> K. 
Caleb James Cottle. We rehearsed none of these, just to be clear, so this is all on the fly. Joshua David Cowell. <laughs> Josiah Edward Davis. Christian Doc Diffenbaugh. Samuel Abraham Dominguez. Elizabeth Rochelle Dries. Cameron Alexander Dunmeyer. Anna Grace Eddy. Sarah Hope Edwards. Just checking a few final items on the transcript. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Eleanor Grace Everett. Reagan Alexis Fowler. <laughs> Sophia Jacqueline Galbraith.
George Cade Gaskill. Margaret, Margaret Claire Getz. <laughs> Joshua Alexander Gibbs. Carter Hayes Grace. Charles Patterson Graham the second. Maris Lee Grant. Aaron Michael Grassi. <laughs> Samuel McDuff Green. Bree Taylor Hall. Camille Rashad Harrison. Kathleen Evelyn Hartzell. <laughs> Ashlyn Grace Hassel. Charles Edmonds Holbrook. William Parker Jones. Macy Claire Keelan. Andrew Hollemeyer Kramer.
Hadasha Alasiel Lopez Navarro. Christian Thomas Morello. Arturo Reyes Marin. Ezekiel David Martin. <laughs> Haley Elizabeth Martin. Aiden James Mason. <laughs> Davis Michael McGowan. Jackson Gray McNulty. <laughs> Jeremy Patrick Melendez. Samuel Tucker Morgan. <laughs> Gracelyn Meadow Moss. Tyler Christian Nyloff. <laughs> Merritt Ashley Pound. Ella Rose Reese. <laughs> Joshua James Robertson. Jacob Hatcher Russell. Some of these are easier to anticipate than others. Ava Elizabeth Salvent.
Ethan Alexander Scott. Zachary Jack Schaefer. <laughs> Jack David Shepherd. Audrey Elizabeth Shrewsbury. <laughs> Ethan Bailey Shoemate. Savannah Joe Spears. <laughs> Tyler Matthew Spivey. Sophia St. John Stoker. Cameron Scott Sumners. Samuel Jeffrey Tanner. <laughs> Jackson Morris Barton Travis. Campbell McLean Vincent. River Anatoly Vincent. Alina Hogan Webb. James Paxton Wright. been that tall before. <laughs> Jake Landis Young.
And just to be sure we keep the good times rolling, Anna Grace Eddy. Sarah Hope Edwards. <laughs> Alphabetical order is really overrated anyway. <laughs> Eleanor Grace Everett. Right, and at this time, I'd like to ask all of our graduates to please stand. There's nothing more I have to say other than that we love you and we'll miss you very much. And congratulations on officially being graduates of Coastal Christian High School. At this time, you may ceremonially move your tassel from right to left. And ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you for the first time, the graduated class of 2023. Congratulations. At this time, we'd like to invite forward our choral seniors, as well as any choral alumni out there, um, to join us in the time-honored tradition of honoring our new graduates with a parting blessing.